I've been walking, walking, walking beneath streetlights. I've been walking, walking, cause I can't find peace on these nights. I've been walking, walking, but my strides are getting slow. Still, I'm walking, I'm walking, but I don't know where I'm going. I've been looking for love. But only found deception Told my secrets to some people Who have not kept them I'm trying to beautify myself. Who knew when you on dialysis you have problems with kidney disease, kidney disease and gum disease, bone disease, all these different things. I'm taking medicine for calcium. I'm trying to get my, my teeth brushed right with the, the different things. And I just don't know what else to do. You know what I mean? And yeah, I got some coral crunching out. What's going on here? Somebody need to help me. Show me something. Tell me something. Point me in the right direction. I don't know what to say or do. You know what I mean? Ugh, because this is the Lisa Baxter show. Giving you the 411 in the kidney world. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Oh, wow. I got a wonderful guest for you tonight, but they were having a little difficulty, but we're going to do the show anyway. But I wanted to show you the cute little gloves that they have now when um, you have to go out. I always was using the clear ones or the blue ones, but when I went to the doctor's office, they had this one and they had that one. I guess as long as it worked and as long as it take them germs away, that's all we really care about. How about that? I ain't mad at you either. Wow, wow. Well, we were trying a lot of good things tonight, a lot of new things tonight to get things going right. So um, I'm going to be doing my guest over the phone because we can't see her. We tried everything and it's just not coming through. Even with the best phone that she has, it's still not coming through. So we're just going to work it out the best we can and still give you a great show. I would like to welcome Miss Wendy Adams to the show. Say hello, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome to the show. And um, I'm glad that you decided to do this. I'm happy that you're doing it. And um, I want everybody to know um, that you are just a great, wonderful person that dealt with a lot, a true, real warrior, um, a peace officer. I should be reading your stuff off, and I wasn't. I have everything to the side here. Okay. All right. I mean, a dialysis, a heart, a lung, a polycystic kidney disease warrior, a, a peace officer of a, a public safety for 27 years. Ain't that something? Well, we got her on the show, and we're going to hear a little bit about her journey and a little bit about what she's dealing with and what she's been doing and how she's been doing it. Okay? So we're going to start out with your beautiful job. Tell us a little bit about your job, Wendy. Well, being a peace officer and um, a public safety, it's just, a, for me, it's a lot of standing up, a lot of running around, mm -hmm. and a lot of, um, you know, walking and standing in that heat, whether it's cold or hot, we out there. And I'm the type of person who, I stand eight hours when they have me out there. But I'm 16, I stand in 16 hours. Ooh. I'm not going to run inside and sit down. It's just, it was in my DNA before I got on dialysis, and that's just my DNA now. Mm, tell it, tell it's it. It's not a point I'm trying to prove anything. It's just me. Yeah. Well, you know? I know you're a workaholic, you know. 
I know you love to work and you love to do what you got to do and you like helping people. So, um, all right. So that's how your job is. And that's what are some of the things that you have to do. Um, tell me a little bit, uh, how did you come to get, get this job? How did you was well, introduced to this job? Well, actually, my neighbor is the one who introduced it to me. And I used to work in the shelter system. And one of my supervisors from the shelter system, her and another one of the officers ended up going there. So I went by the I passed and so almost 28 years now, I'm still there. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you have to like it. Wow. You have to like it to stay there that long. No, to be honest with you, my thing was to get my own business. So my plan was to go in there and stay two years. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't ask me how I went over, but um, I enjoy what I do. Like you said, working with people, the public, you know, I love people. So um, if I can help someone, I'm going to do it. And I have helped a lot of people over the years. Yes. Wow. You know? Yes, I know you have. I really know you have. Now, how did your kidney journey start? Excuse me? Your kidney journey, how did it start? Well, you told me that it's, a, um, it's hereditary in my family. And, you know, I thank God for my siblings because I didn't want to go on dialysis. When I started hearing about it and seeing what my siblings was going through, I was trying to find the method to beat it. I was like, okay, I'm not going to go on. But, um, you know, after everyone started approaching me and coming to me and letting me know, that's what I really needed. And I got to the point, 2011, where it was either going dialysis or it was no longer going to be me. Mm. That's how far, you know, I went with just pushing and trying, not trying to go on, you know. But um, I just thank God really for my siblings really enlightening me on what I needed to do. And, you know, once I did it, because, you know, I went from losing my taste buds to not being able to walk. I think one day I look in the mirror, I couldn't even identify who I was. That's how you know, mm. bad I look. Wow. So just really trying to avoid it. Well, yeah, so, yeah. It does alter appearances, I know. It can, can really alter appearances. Yes. So, um, once I, you know, I went on and I listened to all my siblings and what they had to tell me and the advice that they gave me. And um, from there, it was something, it was part of life that I had to deal with. You know, I gave it to the Lord, I, I prayed on it, mm -hmm. and I think that's why I'm here today. Wow, wow. So you have polycystic kidney disease, right? Yes. Okay, how long have you been on dialysis? 11 years. How many? You hear me? I'm sorry. You hear me 11 years. I'm sorry, nine years. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nine years. Yes. Wow, nine years. So I know you must have counted different things in those nine years. Oh, I counted a lot, especially being on life support twice. Mm. Um, life I support. I difficulties at times with my heart due to dialysis. Uh -huh. I didn't have the problems before. Wow. And, um, you know, so I encountered them things, and but I, I, I put up a fight with them. I wasn't going to give up. Yes. You know, I know that the machine, from my understanding, you know, I need to do a little more research. I don't do as much as I should, but I do understand that it, it takes a toll on your heart. Yes. It takes a toll on your on your body, period, especially your bones. And, you know, in the past, I, you know, in um, 2017, December, I fell out of five stairs. And yes. Three different levels of bones in my back. Mm. And I, I really that. feel that a lot of that have a lot to do with your bones getting weak on dialysis. Oh, yeah. I can fight. Through it, but um, I'm a fighter and I'm not going to give up. And that's just what I try to teach a lot of people that's around me on dialysis. Some young, some older. And I try to inform them that, um, you know, I take some natural herbs, different herbs and things like that. Right now, I'm taking the black seed bitter, and it's helping me a lot. Black seed you know, bitter? And, yeah, black seed bitter. Uh -huh. You get that from and, the health um, shop? You go, you go to the herbal store. You have some um, Asian stores that sell it, but not many. But any of the um, 
herbal source you go to is going to have black seed bitter. Just explain to them what the bitter, because they probably just give you black seed. Oh, okay. You got to so say it right. Black seed bitter, right? It's a liquid. It doesn't come like the other ones in the seeds or something. It's a liquid. It's a liquid form. All right. All right. Is that the one that helped you to go to the bathroom? Correct. Ah. So I was a urinating for what? Seven years or so like that. And then slowly but surely it started to urinate. But then when I stopped at one time, it goes back. So then you, so it's something that you do have to stay on. Ah, uh, yeah. You have to stay on, you know? And did so, that, um, did it interfere with any of your dialysis treatment or no, anything? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they just gave me my report and everything is like excellent. You know, like, wow. I, you know, I always check my clearance when I leave and my clearance is always like 1.49, you know, five something, 1.4, 1.4. And that's been the nine years. And lately now that I'm really hitting that black seed, I'm getting 1.7 something. They're like, how do you keep your body so clean? Wow. You know, my doctor even thinking about lowering my time on the machines two and a half hours. I went from three and a half to three. Now he's even thinking about taking me down to two and a half. What? I never went that far back. I, I've done three hours. I've done three and a half hours and three hours and 15 minutes. The less of I ever had was three hours. So two hours and a half? Woo! Could go home faster, right? The nurses don't want me to do that. But the doctor said that if my body is staying clean, She's showing me because I was showing them that I wasn't getting as much dialysis when I was in the car accident. I yeah. had to go to Dallas, had to go for my rehabilitation for um, my bone sister. Jeez, I had. And I was doing an hour and a half dialysis, two hours the most. And I realized, I was like, I look at my clearance and I said, you know, I noticed something that. My body is very clean still, even though I'm not getting as much dialysis. Mm. And I went to the doctor with that, and he was like, you know what? I really can't fight with you. I can't argue with you. He said, you're 100% right. I'm looking at your test results. I'm looking at everything. Wow. And you're doing so good. And you're doing two hours, an hour and a half. So I'm like, so why am I on a machine that's beating my heart down and others, other organs in my body yeah. when I do less time and I'm coming out with good results still? It was, it's it's working for you. Dialysis patient mm -hmm. ask questions. You gotta ask the question. ask questions. Yeah, you gotta work with your team and you gotta ask questions. Well, you know, you and I have been in the same center. Excuse me. I said no. You, you, uh, people gotta ask questions. I said you and I have been in the same center. Right, and I have got people in the center now who got their time moved to the fact of what I'm telling them. Hmm. You know, and it was like, oh, thank you, Wendy. We really appreciate this. We would have never known, you know. But I give that to you, all my siblings. I gave it to you because I learned from you. When you had the center, you show me things. You tell me things. So that's how I learned. You well, know, you my right? sister. You know, I got to say up more, show something. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, I'm grateful for that because where would I be today? Where would I be without all my family? And I, you know, I appreciate everyone, but yes. no one is like family. You know, you're stuck by my side. Everyone's stuck by my side. It's like, you know, when I fall, everyone was there. And that was a blessing right there itself. Well, yeah, you've been in the hospital. You've had uh, back surgery. You have things done with um, your lungs. You've had uh, heart issues and problems. You had kidney issues and problems, but you still a soldier. I mean, what has made you this strong besides family? I'm, I know you got a strong faith. I, I do, and I just, you know, another thing, you know, it's just believing in the Lord, too, because I tell you like this, you know, a lot of people go around, they go, oh, let me help you, you're sick. And, uh -huh. you know, some of them don't agree with what I say because I say, no, I'm not sick. I want dialysis, the difference. Uh -huh. And I feel it is a difference because... I'm not owning that I'm sick. I'm not going to own that. I'm not sick. I'm on dialysis. God knew before I knew that I was going to be a dialysis patient. And there's a will, there's a way, and I will get through it. And like I say, I watch my symptoms, you know, and good things and bad things with them. But yes. I watch and I pay attention and I listen, you know, and, you know, I just start saying, you know, 
Lord put this down there for us. They're here for them. And we have to look into them and take advantage and we have to know what they do for our body. Yes. You know? Yes. And I just started I just started doing that with the natural herbs. I just started exercising a little, you know. I'll just keep walking and try to exercise my body. You know, but you have a lot of patients who are smoking to the past two who yeah. they just go home and they give up. They can't understand me. How come I'm not tired now these dialysis? I go to work. Okay, I get to work at six o'clock AM in the morning. Yes. I give up work at three thirty. I get to dialysis for four thirty. Okay. Some days they don't put me on the machine until seven o'clock. I give up dialysis at ten o'clock at night, eleven o'clock at night. I need to go back to my job and do sixteen or more half hours. I get up three thirty, four o'clock the next wow. day. And they don't understand how I do it. But by the grace of God, that's how I do it. Because he keeps me going. And I'm a true believer yes. in Jesus. And I know he's the one that keeps me going. Because I worked two and a half years straight after I went um, on dialysis. Two and a half years straight. Seven days a week. Mm. Double. Okay? Yeah. And I haven't taken a day off for two and a half years. Wow. Well, you know, we're a working family. All of us worked while we were on dialysis, and you, you had it was seven of us on there, seven siblings, including yeah, you and me up. and the rest of our family. Not right. even talking about the aunts and uncles and, and stuff like that, even down to my mother in law, you know. But, um, wow, wow, it was, it was my director who said, Okay, this is enough, you're going to take a break. It was you, it was me, and then we had other siblings who say, Okay, but. You know, give your body a break because your yes. body won't take you when they need a break. But I'm just saying, if people on my job was not on dialysis, they complain every day. Me, I keep going, and it's not. I'm not being fake about it. I'm being real. Some people be like, "I know you're tired," but I don't be tired, Lisa. Yeah. I don't be tired. Yeah, I get my days. I get tired. I'm human. Yes. But overall, I just keep going, and I thank God for that. It's just that I want people to know. You could be on dialysis and you can work the job. You can. You could be on dialysis. There's other activities you can get involved in. Your life is not over. No, no. Well, you were active before dialysis. You were a, a goer and a runner and a walker way before dialysis started. And you picked it back up again in spite of. I'm proud of you with that. You know what I mean? And I'm glad, you know, you're here to see it. Because you could have died so many times, you know, and all these different things you've been through in the hospitals and stuff like that. What is your take on coronavirus or COVID-19? Well, I've been through that, too. You've been so, through coronavirus and COVID-19? Correct. Woo, Shondo. And my nurse called me in her office, and they was like, they don't even know how I made it because we lost over 20 people at our dialysis center. And wow. I'm the one that's sitting here talking to you today. Woo! My God. You even told me some staff had had it. And I mean, staff. wow. Staff had coronavirus at your center. You had Correct. patients. You said 20 patients lost their lives. That is heavy. Correct. And God spared Correct. your life and saw fit for you to tell us testimony. I might have to have you again and do it where they can see you. But if not, we still got it. We still got it here on tape some kind of way. But I, you know, I appreciate the testimony. Yeah, the sad part about it is they didn't even know it was the coronavirus until after the fact. I've been to the hospital three different times. Wow. I three went times? to Jamaica Hospital. They couldn't tell me what it was. They went from me having pneumonia, from me having an infection on top of pneumonia, uh -huh. or them telling me they're not sure, giving me antibiotics, and I'm still sick. Wow. I My went God. back to the hospital again. They couldn't figure it out. And to the time where I couldn't breathe and walk, is mm. when they accepted me. And that's where they still didn't figure it out. They said something's wrong. Because don't forget, this was from February 10th all the way down to the second week in March. And they couldn't figure out what's going on. And wow. so they see, when, when I was informed to take a CAT scan, stop taking all them x ray get a CAT scan. Yes. That's when they see, oh, like you might be losing a lung. And that's when they start seeing what was going on. Losing a lung? You went from pneumonia to almost losing a lung to the fact you have coronavirus? Oh, that's serious. They gave me the machine to keep breathing. They gave me, they was like, you got to keep working that lung or you're going to lose it. got to work the lung. You had to do that machine thing? Yes. And then Ooh. is when I went back to dialysis after I left the hospital. And they called me in there and told me, the nurse had the virus. And she said, I saw your chart. You know you had corona. 
Well, and the people in the hospital didn't tell you this. It took the dialysis center to tell you. I tell you three times back and forth to the hospital. I'm telling them something's wrong with me. I lost fifty pounds. Chandra, mm -mm. I lost fifty pounds. Come on now, fifty. Fifty Woo! pounds I lost. Wait. Wow, wow. And, you know, no one can tell me. You know, not to be disgusted about it, but growing up every day, mm -hmm. diarrhea. Put it out day, there. No one can tell me anything. And you went to three different hospitals, you're throwing up, you, you got diarrhea, you lost 50 pounds. Were you in any pain or anything? I was in, my stomach was bothering me a lot. Okay, the stomach oh, bothered you. Up here, it got to the point where one time I didn't even eat for almost two and a half weeks. Woo. What I did was take a sip. He will give me a sip of soup. He will give me, he'll tell me to try to eat the noodles. I couldn't eat them. I would drink the broth. One or two noodles would go down. And yeah. I think that's one of the other reasons why I lost so much weight. But food was my enemy. I it didn't was eat the enemy. anything to drink. Mm. I would take a sip of water. A bottle of water just about last week. A wow. Small bottle. Wow. My, my, my. So, because food or drinking anything was my enemy. I was sick and no one could tell me what was wrong. We heard about the coronavirus in China. We heard about all this, but no one is seeing it here in the United States. Yeah, yeah. And, and nobody was covered up then, you know. And this happened to you when? In December, right? No, this happened to me in February. Oh, that was February. Okay, I'm sorry. February. Yolanda had, had pneumonia in December. Okay, I'm getting it all mixed yes. up. Too much February. family. How about that? But yeah, okay. I went through pneumonia. Yeah, I know. Times I had pneumonia. God is so good to me. I had 15 blood transfusions. 15 blood transfusions. I've been in the hospital over 10 times for pneumonia. Whew. The blood I'm a true blessing, and God has me here for a reason, and I'm going to figure it all out. Well, he got you on here to tell his testimony because somebody needed to hear it. You know what I mean? So if there's a a dialysis patient up there because I know you also waiting on the list for a transplant, right? Yes. How long you been waiting on the list? Well, I was on the list off the list because when I broke my back, this is what's very important to a lot of people too. When I broke my back and I was out over a year, I lost my insurance. So when you lose your insurance, they take you off the list. Tell me about the loss of insurance, insurance business. Uh huh. Right. So I'm going back on. But it's a blessing too. I have a nephew. Matter of fact, I have two nephews and one niece just off the kitchen. So beautiful. You better I, go ahead now. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's all in the family. I ain't mad at you. Come on now. I'll be honest with you though. Yeah. I really feel that there's a cure in the herbs before I take their kidney. I'm gonna be honest with you. All right. Because Take it, take it. I appreciate it. I thank God. That's why I want him to show me and tell me which way to go. Yes. Yeah. I know these are all my young nieces and nephews, and I don't want to take that kidney unless I definitely need it. Yeah. If I can get through this with the natural herbs and get off with natural herbs, because my sister Taryn just met someone who now is showing her how she has a kidney just like you. Right. Now he's showing her how she was on the show also. He told her testimony. You know she told it. Right. But since then, he's telling her how to get her off of the um, medication. The transplant so, medicine? Correct. Woo. So wow. that's what she's working on. And what we're trying to look into now, if you can get her off those medications, then he should, he's going to next deal with me where I don't even have to get a transplant. Wow. Well, that must be some big, powerful stuff. I know people that haven't gotten on dialysis or was on and did something, you know, but whatever you do, you always got to be, you know, watchful and careful, do your homework, do your research. Sometimes what works for somebody else don't always work for you, but whatever works, God got the plan and he got the master plan at that. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm trying to stay in alignment with God, him and his word, you know what I mean? Boy, I wish I could see your beautiful face and all the beautiful people can see you. And I know even though you're a private person, you still came on here and told it. I ain't mad at you. If I'm going to get it where you see my face. <laughs> you know, I apologize and you know, explain to them that I apologize. I'm sorry. But 
but I'm going to work with it. We're going to work with it so the next time I make sure I have everything right. <laughs> well, I know. I always tell every guest to have the backup phone, the uh, you know, the computer, borrow a phone. But things don't always work out when you're doing a live show. That's why it's a, rea a reality show at that. If you have something to say to a dialysis patient or a woman out there that maybe dealt with some of the same conditions or illnesses, what would you say, Wendy Adams? If, if, if I say that, I'm sorry, say that again. What would you say to a woman out there, Wendy Adams, who may have the same illness as you or been on dialysis? What is a word of encouragement? Well, you know what? And I respect the fact that you said a woman out there, but it could be a woman or a man. That True. Race, it, it, it's, for, it's for them to take heed of what I'm saying, sort of, that there is help out there. Because there was another um, young lady I'm dealing with. She's 35. And mm -hmm. her family put her in a nursing home. And Sounds she asked me one day, she said, how come you're so happy? I'm like, what do you mean? She said, every time you come into dialysis, you're smiling. You're happy. You're always cheerful with the nurses and everybody. And she's like, I just stay depressed. Like, my kids can't even deal with me no more because I'm always depressed. Wow. And I try to explain to them because life still goes on. They got you got to know that life goes on. You know, there's people out here who's going through worse. This might sound bad, dialysis. A lot of people like, I see people who look at my arm. And I'll be honest with you. It bothers me. You made me strong. You know, these made me strong because y'all didn't care who saw your arm. Y'all didn't care no. because y'all was alive and y'all appreciate the Lord having you all here. And I had to get there. And I'm not even 100% there, to be honest with you. I still see people looking at me. And it, it do bother me a little bit, but I'm getting stronger. Well, I mean, you're human. That's the human side of things, you know? Right. I'll let it be a teaching lesson. Yeah. I look at some people who, they can't move. When I was in that hospital, you know how many people, family members I met, and they fell down the flight of stairs? And when they fell on that flight of stairs, okay, they're wow. not here together. When my pastor from my church came to me and said, my doctor told him that he don't know how I'm here together. Mm -hmm. I should not be here today if I fell out of that flight of stairs. And mind you, I was home by myself. I had to search for my phone to get it. They called 911. It took two hours to get that phone. Wow. I remember that. that yeah, you, know, you had to be in rehab and everything going through that. You know what I mean? I was in the hospital two weeks, and I was in rehab for one year. That's a lawsuit for the, the landlord, and that was a lawsuit for the hospital that didn't tell you that you had coronavirus. I hate to say it, it ain't all about money, but they need to get stuff right. Whoever they are, wherever they are, get it right. I thank God I'm here. I Amen. Thank God I'm here. You know, and yeah. I'm here for a reason. And I feel more than the lawsuit, it comes for me to put out that um, there's someone else who can hear from me and know. Amen. It's just, you, you don't have to be sad. There's life still out there. That's right. You know, and, I, and I'm and i happy, you know, I, I, you know, my family make me happy. I have a good time. Uh -huh. Life still goes on. And, you know, I do appreciate what you do, Lisa, because you're putting it out there to let people like that lady that I met who's very depressed. They need to hear your show. They need to hear people speak about this, this life. There's enjoyment wow. still in life. Well, thank you. Well, pass it on to her. Put it out there. Definitely, definitely. You know, I told um, some people at the center about your show. I put yeah. it out there. Thank you, thank you. Know. you. But, well, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, Mr. Belcher got a show right after this, and we praying for him. He wasn't feeling that well, so Koboshe. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely give him a shout out, and I'll definitely keep him in prayer. Thank you. And I give a shout out to you because I appreciate you putting it out there. You know, as my bigger sister and sitting there for me and showing me the way. Because wow. I couldn't show a lot of people the way if I didn't have all my siblings showing me the way. Wow. I had my brother Keith who first met me at the dialysis center. I had my sister Denise. I had them all there for me. Oh, yeah. Thank God. You know, all, I missed them. You know? Yeah. I was trying to get them on the wall, but when I got, you know, when I was going to interview you, I was trying to get the guy, uh, Jared A. Brown, to put them on the back of the wall, you know, but that's not how the green screen goes. So I'm learning more stuff. But anyway, I do thank you for coming on. I thank you for not being private enough to put it out there so somebody can learn and hear your story. 
But I wanted to tell you that I love you and thank you for doing this. And I love you too, but I want to say something. Take one second. I got to shout out to um, Shana, my niece, my nephew, um, Tito, Juan, and my niece, Jay, because without them too, without them too, mm -hmm. you know, I right. wouldn't be where I'm at. And yes. even John, they all give me advice, though. So I love my nieces and nephews. My sister Tara, she stays by my side. Yes. All the time. Uh, she yeah, does. They stay by my side. Oh, yeah. And my brothers. But, so thank you very much for having me. And the next time I come on, you'll be able to see my face. I can let the world know. Who, who all right. Who they listen to right now. All right, my baby. Love okay, you. God bless. Thank God you. bless. You too. Good job. Okay. 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 Bye bye. Well, you guys have heard it, and you, well, you've heard it. I can't say you saw it except my face, but you've heard it. You heard a story, and I got to try to have her back on again, but if not, if we don't get that chance, I just wanted you at least to know, okay? So God bless, take care, and have an excellent, great night, and watch Mr. Belcher because he's coming on at 9 o'clock, okay? Peace.